Mr. New Vegas Show, the show within my opinion, which I respect, the best looking audience around. Somebody prove me wrong? All the latest news coming your way right now. There's word in from Camp McCarran that an attempt to bomb its monorail system was foiled by an alert civilian contractor. Security is being tightened. One more story for you. Listeners have been unable to pick up radio broadcasts from Black Mountain recently. Most are calling the static, quote, a welcome improvement. You know, I think all news, whether it's good or bad, brings us closer together. Don't you? And now, I'd like to play one of my very favorite songs for you. Yeah, well, I don't want to really listen to it. But anyways, hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Fallout New Vegas. Last time, as Mr. New Vegas uh, stated, uh, we went to Black Mountain and shut down the radio transmission that was there. We also... Yeah, you know, helped out the Nikin leader that was there, getting her old friend back. As well as rescued our new friend, Raul, the Mexican ghoul. In today's video, we're going to be heading back to the New Vegas Strip and, well, d delivering all the vault suits that are greatly needed. In hopes of just, you know, scratching that off the bucket list, as well as heading to Cottonwood Cove to... Uh, pick up a much delayed sniper rifle that I have been putting off for far too long mm. And then after that we're gonna be paying a visit to the Brotherhood safe house and see what wares they've got over there uh, Excuse me Now Some people are probably wondering um, Where is this gonna leave me? We're pretty much at the very end of the game, but there's still so much more to cover and you know that once you reach a certain point, there's no way you're going to be able to progress because when are you going to do the DLCs and what point are you actually going to, you know, switch focus towards them? Well, there's actually a few more things I want to do around the Mojave before we actually get into the DLCs and plus I'm trying to get something special planned for the first one. So I kind of want to see where, where that goes before I begin it. Because there's still, we still need to get uh, the Legend of the Star, we still need to... You know, go hunting for the legendary creatures. We need to, you know, pay a visit to... What part of Vegas is this? West Side. Uh, because there's actually a very lengthy side quest de dealing with West Side. Well, a location near West Side, to be exact. But for now, let's head off to the Vegas North Strip. In fact, I'll probably just see you once we get into Vault 21, just to save up on time. And we are finally back at Vault 21. Hopefully this time Sarah will decide to give me a good reward for all these vault suits I have. I went through two vaults worth of vault suits. So hopefully this picky little woman can actually, you know, enjoy the, th the fruits of my labor. Well, well, if it isn't the vault explorer himself, welcome back. I have some more vault gear for you. You do? That's wonderful. Let me see what you brought. All right, that's gonna net you lots of caps, my friend. Do you want to trade? No, I brought them here right because I didn't want to give you the vault suits. I just wanted to dangle them in front of your face. Oh, that makes me so happy. You are too much. Sarah, where's my reward, Sarah? Hey, stranger, where you been, huh? Missed me missed or you. missed all the merchandise I've brought you? Did I miss something? Uh, quest? Hmm, I guess I, I guess it was an, an unmarked quest. Oh, I, I always figured it, it was like one of the main quests. Hey, strange. Hmm, why don't you pass by my room? We'll catch up. I can tell you tales of all my various explorations deep underground. You're kicking me into gear, huh? Well, I think I'll drive my chassis over to your pad. Wait for me down there and don't forget the oil. Eh, you know what, but yet I... Eh, you know what, screw it. I've had a long day. I need this break. Wow. 
Well, that was oddly unsatisfying. I love the fact that I am still standing here in my heavy-ass power armor after that encounter that we've had. I could just, you know, chicks dig a man in power armor. I just would love to imagine that during that whole experience, I was just inside my power armor this entire time because it apparently rusted shut. All right, so after that, uh, let let's head out into the wasteland. You know, after that little stress relieving. You know, I left a little calling card on the nightstand. We are f out of here, and this is now I can officially say we are never going into another vault for the rest of this game. Well, unless I decide to get frisky. Nah. No more vaults. I am vaulted out. Instead, we're gonna be going someplace uh, not as eh, as it would be going into a vault, but probably somewhat as dangerous. We're gonna be heading down to Cottonwood Cove because there is a weapon that I need to pick up from down there. Uh, really, the easiest place I would want to go to would be Ranger Station Echo. Searchlight? Uh, you know what? Let's go to the Prospector Camp. It's actually close to Echo, and also it's actually closer than uh, Searchlight would be. Plus, I actually still need to go through Searchlight and find those last tags. Just trying to figure out where would those ghouls be hiding at. Uh-oh. Uh, 20 bucks says that's just blow flies. And they're not skittering back and forth, so they can't be... Can't... Oh my god! It was the other thing I didn't want it to be. Up. Oh, now I see what he's shooting at. Look at... Alright, and he's running. You'd think Caesar would finally wise up about now. Oh, now, now he's just sauntering back towards me. Eddie, sending my, my regards. Eddie. Eddie. Fine, if you want something done right, do it yourself. If you want something done right, actually be able to hit it. You know what? I'm going to take a chance with that 7%. Nope, still missed. Hold still so I can shoot you in the face! Oh, come on, my reticle was right over him. Also, hi. Are you trying to snipe me with a submachine gun? <laughs> You'd think that legionnaire would get the message of not trying to mess with me, but no, this guy's a badass and now he's a dead badass. Bro, oh, did you really burn through all your ammo already? I'm sure you'll be fair and uh, he's got he's got his machete with him. Eh. Yep, now he's got lucky again. All right. I'm not going to judge you, but I am going to question your reasons for having it. I think flip-flop more than something that flip-flops. I don't know. I I didn't I wasn't going anywhere with that. I was just talking for the sake of talking. Not great. Now what? Is there another Legion party? I've been doing this nope, Rad Scorpions. Years. At least it wasn't Legion. I'm so sick and tired of just Legionnaires deciding to charge at me head first, thinking that they can handle this. Look at this. Look at this. Is this really something that a few people wearing sports equipment think they can actually handle? Do they honestly think that they can handle this? I mean, I know T-45 is not the best armor in the game. But still... Power armor versus light armor. Power armor will always win. Coyote Mines. I believe... Is this a Legion place or is this just a ghoul place? I think it's a ghoul location. Um, don't want to get distracted. I want to get this weapon. Then maybe we'll pay a visit to the mines. I'm trying to remember where exactly... Oh, hello. Oh, no, wait, that's just Raul. No, nope, that's a ghoul. No, it would be that way. It'd be this way towards Cottonwood Cove. Would it? It says there's an unmarked location over here. 
It's relatively close because it's swaying back and forth. Don't try and snipe with a shotgun. I uh, apparently discovered something. I don't know what that something was. So yeah, that wasn't the location I was thinking of. It's down this way. Yeah, 16 AP rounds and the rest is just regular rounds. I'll just stick with the regular ammo for now. I'd rather have an abundance of regular ammo than just 16 rounds that I could easily miss. Where is that location? No, it's up in the hill somewhere. Maybe it's a bit further down this way. There it is. I think. I hope. But most likely, I doubt. Is that the Death Claw Promontory over there? Yes, it is. Wow. Draw distance. Impressive. I always seem to talk about the draw distance in this game, but for the time it came out, and for all the technical issues people have with it, it it still really delivers on that on that on that, on that part. There we go. This is the location I've been building up for far too long. The sniper's nest. And the reason we didn't really come here until I maxed out my uh, my lock picking and also star bottle cap is because of what's in here. I need a very hard lock picking to be able to get into this gun case, so I need to have it maxed out. And for the love of God, do not press that X. Because that would permanently screw me out of what I need in here. Or, well, what I need to give to Boone in here. Unless I decide to waste a perk to be able to get a second chance at opening this. But inside the gun case is the Gobi Campaign Scout Rifle. I almost said sniper rifle, even though it is a sniper rifle. It is arguably one of the best sniper rifles in the game. Also, healing powder, why not? And, no, that's a scorch book. I thought that was actually something of value. Kind of looked like a skill book. The Gilby Campaign Scout, Scout Rifle, it, it has really high damage and twice the bonus critical damage. It's the, be it's the best weapon for a... Um... Uh, luck build, since luck also dictates the uh, critical chance. I wish I had some legionnaires that I could test this weapon out on. I doubt Raul would be willing to let me test it out on him. Maybe there's a few legionnaires over here. I know we're close to one of the ranger stations, so we might as well pay it a visit just so we can get it marked on our map. Which also reminds me that I need to pay a visit to back to Camp Forlorn Hope to begin work on a kind of story-related side quest. It actually does dictate one of the endings to the game. Man, I didn't realize how far from Echo we were. But the thing is about the mission that I left back in Camp Fuller and Hope, uh, it dictates what we need to do by going to the fort and dealing with Caesar. Now we can actually deal with Caesar directly, and I have been building it up, and I do plan on doing it, uh, just not right this minute. Now, let's just get over, and if we remember from back when I was in Camp Searchlight, Private Edwards, who was a ghoulified trooper down there, we decided to point him in the direction of this ranger station, so hopefully he survived this trip here, and if so, it'd be nice to actually see him again. I mean, I doubt it, because there's always a very high chance that he got killed on the way, and if so, that's really sad. But, who knows? Oh, hey, check it out. He actually made it. Honored to speak with and you, thank you for the respect. We got ourselves a little ranger family reunion now. Time's right for a few. I don't understand it. But yes, all the troopers here are ghouls, except yeah, for the ranger here. Back down. Hello. They didn't know who they were messing I don't know with. why. Even though the veteran ranger who's here is a ghoul, Look and I guess the comm officer as well, about damn time. it's weird. With how dead 
We'll have Vegas annex before the year's out. It's, it's weird that they kept two humans and then just make them ghouls. I guess they could be recent transfers, but then again, this place is crawling with radiation. It wouldn't be smart to put humans here. And there's something dangerous right on the other side of this mountain. I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to bother with it. I uh, guess the counterfeiting shack would be the closest to the Brotherhood safe house, so let's head over there. Plus, there's always some wasteland creatures that I can always test the scout rifle on. So, that is nice. Of course, I didn't want that creature to be a freaking Cazador. I probably should have aimed for his wings. Holy shit, that thing is huge! Raul, uh, you might... Yeah, you're probably going to be going down pretty fast. Thankfully, you are the fastest gunslinger in the Midwest. God, I forgot how slow reloading this thing is. I don't know what's over there. Well, the compass just told me it would be a Cazador because it's darting back and forth over there, and I'm going to avoid that place. Alright, so the Brotherhood safe house should be just right up down this road. And I know it's like near a cliff face, so I think it's over there somewhere. Funnily enough, Raul's house is actually nearby as well. And if we ever decide to cross paths with it, it would be nice to pay it a little visit. Oh god. That train, that train location. That, I believe, is Deathclaw territory. There's just Cazadors over there. I mean, I'm a little happier now. I'm not as freaked out, mostly because I'm wearing power armor and got a pretty powerful sniper rifle on me. Yep, there's the Death Claws. I remember once, uh, while I was just exploring around, I just getting like the lay of like the enemy locations and stuff. I went through the train tunnel that was by Nellis and. Uh, doing so sometimes causes Death Claws to spawn inside the train tunnel at the door. And when I did, uh, it kinda sorta really freaked me the hell out, and I may have started building bricks. I took up a masonry job, we'll say. Uh, he's going back that way towards the trains. I never actually explored that area. I guess I could pay the visit and see what there's anything of value down there. I mean, it's crawling with Death Claws, so there has to be. But first things first, let's head into the Brotherhood safe house. Surprising they have a safe house this far from Hidden Valley. And in not really the best of locations. Hey. Paladin! What can I do for you? Uh, are you always here? Not always. I have other places I need to be. But I stop by every few days Okay. Or so. Bye. Bye. I'm a little dead inside, as you can tell. Oh, this is a nice little location you got here. And hey, check it out. Uh, we got some high explosive missiles. We got a missile launcher. We got T-51, T-45. So we got a spare. Uh, we got some recon armor. Missile launcher itself. Uh, useless junk. Can I make any ammo? No, I can't. Can I make anything? No, I can't. Actually, you know what? I'll just recycle some flamer fuel. And let's say we switch out of this dusty, not as good T45 and upgrade to the T51. It has the strength benefit. Okay, not as much of a strength benefit as T45. And it has a plus two. But it doesn't have my... Uh, agility by two, which is nice. Plus, the helmet gives me a charisma of one. And unlike the Brotherhood version, this has like the the green breastplate and the green shoulder plate. Although the arm, the the fact that I had to sacrifice an arm piece because of my Pip Boy, yeah. But we also get a Tesla cannon, uh, Gatling laser, and some electron charge packs. So that's always nice to have. Oh, and a minigun. I didn't even notice it up there. Eddie, I got more stuff for you. Take this. 
take this. Take this. Where's that minigun at? Hmm. Hey, you know what? Since these are in such bad can Oh, no, I don't want to give it to Eddie. I want to repair it. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the T41 T45 here. Mostly because I have no way of actually ever getting it again. So instead I'll use the recon armor to upgrade this T-51 helmet. There we go. Now it's not as bad. And plus I look twice as stylish. Take that. Uh, yeah, I keep the explorer hood. You can take the recon armor and the T-45. There we go. Now I'm not over encumbered. But yeah, nice little location if you want to store some items and all that stuff. You get you get some power armor for your your deeds, just so long as you can actually survive the trip up here. And it's the only place I'm actually going to be able to get a regular T51 since Torres is no longer a viable option. I think, I think that the Hoover Dam Quartermaster might sell power armor as well. In fact, I remember him selling some power armor, but I think it might just be salvaged or T-45, not T-51. It's too bad Vendertron doesn't, like, sell you power armor when it gets to a certain point in the game. He only sells you the reinforced combat armor. Uh-oh. I may have pissed it off. Got him for you. Man, I forgot how slow this thing shoots. Or reloads, actually. Shooting-wise, it's actually pretty good. And yeah, you know what? Screw it. Let's just switch to the anti-material rifle and... Boop! Whoa! Did I load this with explosive rounds? Okay, I guess we're doing this. I guess we are, Raul. Hopefully that dinky little pea shooter can actually do some damage. Okay, I guess we're doing Damn. Hopefully they... I don't know why they decided to stick a nuclear bomb inside the engine of that truck. This is Quarry Junction all over again. Come on, just need to line up my sight. Don't go that way. You know what? Screw it. Explosives. Get him, boss. I mean, if that fits with your it will fit with my schedule if I can actually hit it. There we go. Oh, wow, that 5% actually did damage. And he's off! Oh, still, damn it. There we go. Much better. And bloody mess! Can I actually go into this house? Yes, I can, actually. Gibson Train Yard. Possibly a star bottle cap in here. Or ants. Ants work too. Lots of ants actually. This is actually kind of terrifying. Reminds me that it's it's them all over again. Come on. I do not need this in my life. This is just giving me flashbacks. Well, not really flashbacks, but... Well, actually, flashbacks to earlier today, seeing as how it's in spring, and there are literally ants everywhere inside. So this scars me on a deep, like, personal level. And by scarring, I mean it, it, it just gets under my skin. Uh, is there anything in there? Usually when you see empty sarsaparilla bottles, that means that there's a star bottle cap nearby. But I guess not. Maybe the maybe the ants ate it. Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Nope, doesn't look like anything of value was in here besides that uh, first aid box. I know for a fact we can't do anything with those train cars. As nice as it would be to actually go inside the train cars and you know route through. The inner workings for goodies. Great, another one. There you are. And boop! Missed. 
Let's try this again. I think I got him that time. Okay, I guess we're doing this. Eh, you know what? I'm not gonna screw with the giant killer lizard. Mm. You know, since we're in this location, and no, I'm not just like wasting time and stuff. I might as well go to a place I've put off for far too long, and it's actually kind of an important place if you don't want to um waste a perk, but want to up your special stats. Forget where exactly. I'm sure my compass will point me out, but I know for a fact it's somewhere up there. I think it's one of those two buildings over there. But there's a really important building up here, and actually, just to be safe. My specials. I can't really tell. Let's see. T51 bar to advanced radiation poisoning. You know what? There we go. Uh, what's my base uh, stats for specials? So, strength is 7. Agility is 4, Charisma is 6, Endurance is 5, Perception is 5, and Luck is 6. Alright, so put the armor back on. So we need to put 2 into Agility and 1 into Endurance. But TBG, you might be asking, how do we do that? I mean, that would be cost like 3 levels, well... For six levels to actually do so. And what if I don't want to waste my perks on them? Well, young impressionable viewer, or whatever age you are who, who is or is not watching, there is actually an alternative to this. It's not a great alternative, but it's better than nothing. But what we have here is the New Vegas Med Medical Clinic. Inside said clinic is this person hello welcome to the new vegas medical clinic i'm a fully qualified physician and can fix whatever is wrong with you for a reasonable fee if you've got the caps i've also got several implants available to enhance your physical attributes what do you have for sale because you're a friend of the followers i can give you oh, a nice. discount let's see we got a boom saw clipboard doctor's bag Ooh, fixing things, four sets, nothing great. Or some pre-war books, so I guess something great. Uh, what kind of implants do you have? I have several basic implants available that can enhance your physical abilities. Make you faster, smarter, stronger, that sort of thing. And harder? Too much Wait, more no. Expensive well, I guess Sarah would probably you like that. implant that will make you more resistant to damage. The other implant induces a mild regenerative effect. Your wounds will practically heal before your eyes. I would like to buy an implant. One other thing I forgot to mention. Your body may be able to handle only a limited number of implants. The healthier you are, the more implants I'll be able to give you. Now, what surgery are you considering? Now, what she says right there might confuse a few people. Implants in this game are dictated by your endurance. The more endurance you have, the more imp implants you have. I believe for 5 endurance, you can get 3 implants. For 10 endurance, you can get 5 implants. I don't know. I'll probably throw it up on the screen or future me will of like what endurance dictates to the implants you get. But basically, we can upgrade each of our special stats for a pretty hefty fee. Uh, you can enjoy, can you make, apparently there's an implant that can actually affect your luck in life. I wish that was actually a thing in real life because that would just be such a great help towards me. And also the subdermal implant, which, the subdermal implant, what's that? And also the regeneration ability. That would be the Nemian subdermal armor. It's a bit pricey. 8,000 caps, but the implant causes your skin cells to be bolstered with iron. It won't make you bulletproof, but it will make you a little harder to injure. Kind of reminds me of, like, the nano suit from Crisis, where it's just, like, your, your cells just, like, bolster together and just become more impact-worthy. But instead, I am actually going to get a few implants. I'm going to get my endurance up by one. The nociception regulator modifies your cardiovascular system, and you won't tire as quickly. 
The price is 4,000 caps, same as most other employees. I am going to do that. Have a seat in the auto dock. This will take a few hours. This is going to hurt a lot, isn't it? And there we go. Endurance has now been increased by one, and now it is at six. Now we just need to up agility by two, and I can finally get the sniper perk. You're back. No, I've come for more robotic stuff. I need to shove into my exoskeleton. One? Which surgery or well, endoskeleton. Yeah, it would be an endoskeleton for a human since it's on the inside of our body. I would like to be faster. The reflex booster does exactly what it says. Speeds up your reaction times. For 4,000 caps, I can attach the implant to your central nervous node. That sounds very painful. Have a seat in the auto dock. This will take a few hours. Do you really need to go into, like, great detail of where you're going to be shoving these implants at? You're back. Alright. No, I did not want to do that. Too bad my standing with the followers uh, does not dictate... Uh, a discount on implants. And you know what? Just for shits and giggles, I might as well go over the other implants and just see like what where she's gonna put those if I ever decide to get them. How's strength go? I can implant the hypertrophy accelerator for four thousand caps. It will boost your adrenal glands and quickly increase your muscle mass. All right. Very what well. about my perspective? Perspective. The optics enhancer, as the name suggests, gets attached directly to your optic nerve. The price is four thousand. Yeah, no, no, no. You're not going to be shoving metal bits into my eye. Very well. How's charisma? How does that work? The empathy synthesizer will allow you to more easily pick up on subtle emotions and body language. The price is four thousand cash. Nah. I'm already good looking enough. I managed to woo a lovely lady in power armor. All right. All right. Uh, what about intelligence? I'm guessing you're going to shove something into my brain. For 4,000 caps, I can install a logic coprocessor. Wow, that just did. Just 4,000 caps. Here you go. You get a processor shoved right in your head. Very well. All right. All right. How does it affect my luck? That's always like caught my interest. If I implant the probability calculator in your frontal lobe, you'll be able to calculate odds a little better. It's not quite the same as making you luckier, but you'll be able to nudge things your way more often. I can do the implant for four thousand. Okay, that actually does seem like a plausibility. You know, well, you calculate stuff to, to for better odds. All right. Let me do a quick. Uh, what about the regenerative ability? Can I become Wolverine? That's the Phoenix Monocyte Breeder. The implant speeds up cell regeneration, an effect similar to that of some lizards and sea creatures. The implant is very expensive, however. Ouch. 12,000 caps. Yeah, I don't have those caps right now. That's all. Alright, let's, uh, shove another metal bit into my legs. Uh, where was it? Oh, I can't actually up it by two. I always figured out you could up it by two. Huh. Alright, well, can I get the subdermal implant at least? That would be the Alright, here's the caps. Make me thick-skinned, as well as thick-skulled. I mean, I really don't need an implant to become more thick-skulled than I already am. Just tell my family that. Well, I guess I'm going to need to dump a per point into my intense training if I want to up agility by one. Unless there's actually another way I can actually up agility without having to waste a perk on it. I'm going to have to do some in-depth research to see if that's actually a plausibility. But, we got ourselves a new implant. Let's see if there's actually... Uh, let's see. Adamantium Skeleton... Agility implant, animal control... Um... Uh, what would it be? Enhanced sensors, well, it is your companion, endurance implant... What would it be? Oh, yeah, I guess we should also go over Raul's, uh, thing. Uh, while Raul's a companion, the conditions of weapons and armor decays more slowly, so... So long as you have him, weapons will last longer and not break as fast. But then again... 
Weapons I've always found don't really break as fast, and plus, if you have, like, the jury rigging perk, it's not really that much of an issue. Now, where is that one implant? Ah, there it is, the subdermal armor. Your skin has been toughened by the, the, the implant. Your d total damage threshold has gone up by four. That is nice. Well, if I ever decide to come across 12,000 caps, I am sure as hell going to pick up that regen regeneration implant. It's nothing great, but at least it'll be a nice little insurance policy. What's left there to do? I guess we could all go into Raul's, like, personal quest. I mean, it's really fast and... So yeah, why don't we do that, and then we'll call it a video. That sounds like a good plan. We're only, we're not even an hour in, so we got plenty of time. Roll! We must talk. Uh, over-elaborate mob schemes to take over Vega. Reminds me of the days before the war. Hmm. I got some questions about you. Questions, boss? You mean you don't know everything there is to know already? Can you tell me anything about Mr. House? Uh, do you know anything about a goon named Benny? What's your take on the NCR? All right, I suppose. Had a bit of a tough going there at the beginning. You know their first town was nearly wiped out by raiders. Anyway, they got their good points and their bad. Just like a lot of the old governments from before the war. Interesting. Uh, what's your take on the Legion? I don't really have a problem with it. People around here tend to see them as invading marauders planning to burn and pillage the countryside. But I've been to Arizona, boss. Before the Legion, it was a nasty place. So thick with raiders, you couldn't trade with a town two miles up the road. Caesar's laws aren't nice, and their actions aren't always pretty. But then neither am I. But you keep me around. So yeah, he's actually the only companion, well, human companion, who's actually sympathetic towards the Legion. Plus, the fact that you can't go two miles without, you know, wanting to die in Arizona, that's not raiders. That's just being in Arizona. Now, what is over here? This thing has piqued my interest, and it's a location I have not discovered. Actually, you know what? No, it wouldn't be that. Wow, Raul, not even going to give it a chance. Mole Rat Ranch. That is the ugliest mole rat I have ever seen. Man, look at this thing. That is one of the ugliest mole rats in the world. Would you agree, Raul? Oh, but the other poor, poor mole rats. Oh, I'm so sorry for them. Um, doesn't look like there's anything over there. All right, so I guess we might as well get to work on Raul's uh, personal quest. It's actually really easy. You can knock it off practically instantly, so long as you have good standing with the NCR. Because two people we need to talk to for it are NCR related. But our first things first for Raul's personal quest, we need to go and talk to Boyle here at the Nels Air Force Base, and we want to go to the door to the hangar. I forget if this is the look, this is the hangar, or if it's another one which has like the concessions area. Nope, there he is, Boyle. Boyle. Isn't that bomber a beauty? Thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come. Hey, no problem. Talk to you later, man. Bye. It's good seeing you again. I can't believe we were allowed inside the Lucky 38. That place has been a legend since before the war. Wait a second. Um, Raul? Well. That's a good thing. Oh, okay. You there we go. Now you decide to talk to me about it. Uh, what are you talking about? That loyal guy. He's getting up there in years, but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. If you ask me, that's better than withering away all alone. Or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. Well, Loyal's using his years of knowledge to help his tribe. I think it's a noble goal. Yeah, that's what I thought too. What's on your mind? Old history, boss. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm. It was a house for three generations of Tejada. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. 
I never killed anybody, but I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Go on. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. What happened then? About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelt the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister Rafaela out through a window. But everyone else, my parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters, all died. What happened then? Rafaela and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home, but I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. And you blame yourself for this? Maybe. I don't know. All I know is that for all my skills with a pistol, I couldn't help them. Anyway, that was weighing on my mind. Thanks for letting me get it out in the open. Hey, no problem, buddy. Speaking of no problem, man, they, they get, got that bomber up and running pretty fast. In fact, it's actually almost complete. Impressive, impressive. Something that's always irked me is the fact that Raul's, like, backstory, it's so good, but... I wish there was, like, a form of media that we could actually, you know, like, see it firsthand. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, for all, like, the, the Vegas, like, like, the Fallout parody videos and Fallout, uh, like, fan-made movies that's on, like, YouTube and stuff, no one ever, like, did anything to, you know, give visual representation of Raul's backstory. Legion can count on that. You don't say. Also, haha, I actually have a working helmet. And, you know, cooler armor. Alright, so where we need to go, we need to find First Recon. Now, they actually transferred over here after we dealt with the uh, Fiend Leaders. Also, hello, Quartermaster. I forget where exactly they, they stationed themselves, though. I think it's up probably in, like, the right of the camp. Well... I just know for a fact that First Recon, I almost said Force Recon, sounds like a Star Wars thing. Uh, First Recon is actually up here. They may be inside the... wouldn't be in the shack. They'd be in the cafeteria? Uh, that's the barracks. I could be wrong, and they might actually still be back at... Um... Yeah, no kidding. You should have seen it before I helped them out here. They could actually be back at uh, Camp McCarran. And they just haven't, like, decided to leave and come over here. Yeah, because usually I find them outside somewhere. Like, usually gathered around the fire. Um, I guess I'll see you back at Camp McCarran and see if they're actually over there. If not, I'll look around and see if I can find them around Forlorn Hope. So, I'll be back in just a little bit the hell is that? It's probably a blowfly. Alright, I'll see you in just a little bit. Alright, so... Yeah, First Recon was actually in the barracks this whole time. And I was just an idiot. So, if you're wondering where they might be, there's a possibility they can actually be inside here. Now, the one member we need to talk to is... Not you. Not you. Definitely not you. You're just a trooper. Sexton, I guess he's not in this room. Uh, Never seen you around before. What do you want? I thought you should know Cook Cook is dead. This is actually sort of like a continuation of a story that I forgot to do. You killed him? Well, shit. Here I dreamed up this whole elaborate revenge fantasy. 
Didn't really think I'd do it, but as long as the tubby bastard was actually alive, I could pretend like I would. Here, I owe you. Take it and get out of here, before I indulge my inner bitch and spoil the moment. I got 300 bucks. What a pointless trip. Here I thought I'd get a shot at that junkie bastard. Have you seen any serious combat here? Not unless you count the fiends as serious. Gorobetz keeps us inside the fence most of the time. Doesn't matter to me. I just shoot bad guys. Sooner or later, they'll move us out to the dam, though. That's when the shit gets nasty. What do you mean? Legion fights to win. And they're smart. Hell of a lot smarter than these crazy fiends. But I don't feel bad about shooting Legion boys. Fiends, on the other hand, sometimes I get pangs of conscience. Not often. But sometimes. Well, you say the Legion's smart, yet they send wave after wave of their worst troopers to try and kill me. I don't think that's what they would, I would consider to be smart. I've killed so many people, I don't even think about it. Yeah, well, we can't all be heartless shit. Hey, it's not my fault, they try to kill me first. So, you're a sniper. What gave me away? The big gun? The shades? Or yes. The attitude? I didn't know that snipers wore shades. They don't. Only the good ones do. My partner's got some potential, so I let him wear those goofy glasses. I tell him they're his training shades. He totally buys it. Truth is, his eyes just suck. Who's your partner? The little guy. Ten of spades. I like him because he listens. Doesn't shut up the rest of the time, but when I talk, he listens. Also, he doesn't pull any stupid come-ons, like practically every other horndog alpha male on this base. Might be, he's just scared of me, though. Do sniper? so they work in pairs? Yeah. We spot for each other, watch each other's backs. Usually works pretty well, unless you get paired up with an asshole. Thing is, there's a lot of assholes in the army. I keep hoping they'll pair me up with some hot blonde like you see on those old pinups. Shit, I don't even care if she can shoot straight. Can't have everything. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Try not to get killed. Oh, I... Tr this time. Yeah. Yeah. They keep trying to kill me, but they always evidently fail. So I guess maybe the first, the rest of First Recon is inside one of the other buildings. Because that was only half of them, so maybe the second half is inside the mess hall. I would hope so. Um... Well, there's one of them. It's ten. Even. And not, but not who I was looking for. I guess like maybe like an update made them put put them in different locations. It's the only way it makes sense. So basically, we're looking for like the older guy of First Recon who has like the unique uh, cowboy repeater because basically we're talking to a bunch of old folks to. To help, like, Raul reminisce about his past and stuff. And he's one of the people we need to talk to. The other, the last person we need to talk to is inside, is at, uh, camp, well, not camp, uh, Novak. But right now I actually want to find, uh, the first recon member who I need to talk to here. Can't miss him, he's got the hat of, there he is, Corporal Sterling. One of the Ranger vets looked at me, and I just about surrendered. Howdy. Name's Sterling. First recon. Can't say I've seen you before. I'd remember... Pro it's probably the helmet, isn't it? I probably should take this thing off so people can remember my beautiful face. You remember everyone who passes through here? Got a good memory for faces. Landmarks and such, too. It comes with practice, that's all. And a lot of scouting from place to place. Have you seen anything suspicious around here? As a matter of fact, it's funny that you'd ask. A couple nights back, I was on watch in the yard. Got myself a habit of looking all around, not just where I'd expect to find trouble. Old habit, but it saved my hide on occasion. Around about one in the morning, I spied some lights in the control tower. Now that's the third time I've spied those lights, mind you. And every time I ask about it, they tell me the place was empty. I'm just saying, it didn't look empty to me. Hmm. Well, that's information I really don't need, seeing as how I already deal dealt with it. Good to know. No trouble at all. Might be nothing. A couple frisky young folks looking for a quiet place to snuggle up. That light is mighty consistent. Always there at 1 a.m. 
Might be worth the look. Eh, it was already looked at. Turns out it was just it was just a spy. But don't worry, he's been dealt with. Interesting rifle you got there. Level action, right? I call her the Long Carabine. Didn't always have the scope. I added that myself. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. The other snipers used bolt action, but Gorbets reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different. So long as I could hit my targets. How long have you always been with First Recon? Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Well, why did you leave the rangers? Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpay. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waste on any more long scouts either. How'd you manage to escape? Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Uh. Well, that was an interesting story. Always a pleasure. Keep hey, with this safe. armor, I'm always safe. One of the ranger vets looked at me and I just about surrendered. Speaking of which, you probably should get looked at yourself. You might want to take a visit to the medical tent. Got a second to talk uh, about. sure. What's on your mind? Meeting Corporal Sterling. Well, it kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service. But instead, he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? Hmm. I think it's good he devoted to his duty. More people should act that way. You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. You're talking about the Great War. What do you remember about it? After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaquero. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick wagon. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bomb. Wasn't Mexico City basically annihilated from the war? I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield. But it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. Sounds pretty bad. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know, and wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed for the first time since the bombs had fallen. Wasn't it dangerous to be dressed so noticeably? It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off to them, but most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me, but my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there, until, until Rafaela. Uh, what happened? 
She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at our camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. That's terrible. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. So what did you do? I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old Vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel, so I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's not a story, boss. See what I mean about having him having such a deep and strong backstory? He's actually got possibly the strongest backstory of anyone in the Fallout universe. And it saddens me that there's like no like visual representation outside of what you can process in your own mind. Hopefully someday, if someone actually watches this and things that maybe it should be brought, brought to light, then that's something nice. Jeez, you don't have to pull a gun on me. We're just passing by. Tumbleweed! You may be strong, but my Mexican friend is stronger. I think he's angry at me. And he's off. But anyways, our last location, you know what? I want to get this damn helmet off. I am boiling alive inside this power armor. Oh, much better. Uh, there's my glasses. Eh, it's nothing to think great. Actually, where's my hat at? There we go. Much better. I believe, yes, Ranger Andy's bungalow. This is a character that I'm sure some people probably got angry at me at my first trip to Novak for not talking to. We haven't met yet. You must be new in town. I'm Andy. What do you do around here? Right now, a whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. You're with the NCR, right? Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. Would you feel better if I went to go check on them? Uh, no. No, they're gonna think I'm having trouble letting go. They're good soldiers. I don't give them enough credit. All right, well, why don't you tell me about the Rangers? They're the NCR's finest. A one-man platoon, each of them. You got a job where even thinking about it would scare a man senseless? That's when you bring in the Rangers. And if you see a squad of veterans, guys who are in their black armor, well, you won't find a more beautiful sight. Yeah, side. you're telling me, buddy. Love that armor. Too bad I can't really wear it without compromising my reputation with you guys. If only there was a version of the v Veteran Ranger armor that didn't have affiliation with the NCR. Ah, uh, that would be such a dream come true. Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. Knocked me out of the Rangers. This time, it's mostly just reminded me how useless I've got. What happened? A 
few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. Uh, what ha- what'd you do? I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel. Just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. Your body is injured, but not your mind. You're kidding yourself if you think you're useless. Huh. <laughs> People don't exactly line up to find out what's in my head. Can't remember the last time someone suggested I knew something worth knowing. You know, maybe there's something I can do for you. Since you've gone to all the trouble of flattering a crippled old soldier, there's a move we have in the Rangers for knocking an opponent off his feet. Save my butt a bunch of times, maybe it will for you too. Let me show you how it's done. And with that, for passing that speech check and talking to about Andy's backstory, you've learned the Ranger Takedown special move. Use to use this technique, initiate a power attack while moving backwards. You drop the opponent to the ground. And training complete. Raul, what is your input on this? Raul? Angry soldier robots with bazookas. I'm sure they'll be a good police force. Yeah, thanks to you for that input, Raul. Sure, Bob. Hmm. Maybe they need to talk to Andy more. Where'd he go? Is he in the bathroom? No, he's not in the bathroom. Where'd Andy go? Did he leave? Oh, no, he's asleep. Hey, welcome. Oh, DC Joe. You'll get the hang of that takedown. I had trouble learning it at first, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there anything else? No. Hey, uh, wait a sec. I know what I said, but if you find yourself by Ranger Station Charlie, let me know what you find. I'd be interested. All right. Oh, still any input? Hm, I guess I do need to go to Ranger Station Charlie. All right, so... A small little inconvenience, but not really something Have serious. Tower on the... Hey, boss. Oh, I, I guess something? I just had to leave the bungalow. Sure, what's on your mind? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? What do you mean by guys like Ranger Andy? I mean guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old or slow or too injured. Even after a crippling injury, a guy like Andy's tougher and more dangerous than most men alive. Maybe, yeah, I guess you got a point there. We're not just talking about Ranger Andy, are we? Not really, boss. No. I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always this handsome. As far as the world knows, I was Miguel. And I was okay with that. I headed north for a while and ended up in Tucson. Not Tucson, by the way. Things were good there. Well, maybe not good. But better than Mexico City, anyway. I found myself a little shack and started fixing things. Fixing things? Oh, sure, boss. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town. Some I fixed for other people. Some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than killing. And even then, I wasn't getting any younger or faster. I lived there for a long time. Kept it myself. Didn't get into any fights. Hell, the only reason I even kept my guns oiled was professional pride. Oh, well, why aren't you still there then? Getting there, boss. I'd been in Tucson. The locals can call it Tucson all they want, but it's Tucson, damn it. About 75 years when she showed up. Pretty thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name, Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. What happened? This was a long time ago, before Caesar's Legion pacified Arizona and brought the Raider tribes to heel. 
A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets. And I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. But they didn't, did they? No, boss. No, they didn't. As I was saying, I hope they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudia's brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. Did you go rescue her? I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. It took me three days to catch up to them. Claudia was dead when I got there. They put a bullet in each of her eyes. I couldn't do anything except avenge her, just like Rafaela. I charged into the middle of their camp and started firing. Two of them were dead before they knew I was there. The other five, though, they shot the shit out of me. I would have died, I think, if I wasn't so full of rage. How'd you survive? By being a meaner old cuss than the rest of them, boss. I wanted to keep living until they weren't. So I just kept shooting until they were all dead. I was in pretty bad shape in the end, though. I don't know how long I laid there, with the sun baking me and the buzzers chomping at me. Eventually, I got the strength to start moving. Some long time after that, I managed to drag my carcass back to town. And then what happened? When I recovered, more or less anyways, I left Tucson and headed west. I ran into Tabitha at Black Mountain, and well, the rest you know. I swore I was done with the gunslinging life. I was too old, too slow, and too beat up to protect anyone anymore. I thought I was done forever. But after traveling with you, I realized I've always had my doubts. Doubts? About what? About whether I still had what it took to carry my pistols proudly. To use them to do what's right. And now that I've been traveling with you for a while, you've made me realize that I can still do that. Maybe I'm not as tough as I used to be, but my brains can make up for that. And my hands are still quick enough. It's time to put the guns back on. And here we go. This is actually the only time you in the game where a companion's outcome actually is dictated by a speech check. But we have one of two ways. We can either tell him that it's a great idea and I hope you put them to good use with me. Or, that's a good idea, you should focus on your mechanical skills instead, and basically leave his gunslinger life behind. You know what? The Wasteland needs a hero. A hero of- a figure of legend. And I think you're the man for the job, Raul. You can bet on that, boss. Raul has gained the old Vaquero perk. With this, it increases his rate of fire with revolvers and lever action firearms by 33%. Also, it gives us a spiffy looking outfit. At first, I actually kind of laughed a little bit um, by how, how silly his outfit is, but it, it's it, it's based off like a TV character from like Mexico and stuff, so it, it makes sense, or I guess a radio character. Kind of like what the Silver Shroud is in Fallout 4. It, it's one of those campy outfits, but it has like a sentimental value to him. And it makes sense. Plus that giant ass dagger that he has strapped to his waist. It, it's kind of intimidating. But Raul, my amigo. Our work here is not yet done. We still got a lot of work to do in New Vegas. And sadly, I doubt that there's going to be let more people by the time we're done. But until that day comes, I'm going to see you all then. Next time on Fallout New Vegas... We're going to decide, uh, you know what, we're going to head over to West Side. There's actually a series of jobs that we need to do over there. It'll get net me a pretty neat weapon. Plus, it actually works into a hunting trip I have orchestrated for the near future. So until then, I'm going to see you guys next time. Later. Out, out, get out, get out, get out, now!